wanted the best. You've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Boss Show. The preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready. Get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. Thechrisvossshow.com. Hey, welcome to another podcast. Uh, we certainly appreciate you guys coming by. Thanks for being here. We have an amazing author on the show. He's written a, a whole bunch of books. We're going to have to ask him how many there are because he's written so many. I can't count that high. I went to public school. So there was that. Uh, anyway, guys, you can hear him laughing in the back. We'll have him on the show here in a bit. But in the meantime, as always, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. And if you haven't, Yet, make that commitment. Make a commitment to the family that loves you but doesn't judge you, the Chris Voss Show. Go to youtube.com, forward slash Chris Voss, hit the bell notification button, goodreads.com, forward slash Chris Voss. All of your groups on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all those crazy places those kids are playing. Today, we have the amazing author on the show, uh, Neil Shusterman, uh, is with us. He's the author of the newest book that's coming out November 8th, 2022. My God, are we in November yet, Margaret? <laughs> oh, hell we are uh so well we're technically in october right now but it's coming it's coming there in fact one of my friends recently said that uh, christmas ornaments are out at one of the stores in their local stores christmas it's not even october uh anyway guys uh the new book is called gleanings stories from the ark of a scythe uh neil Shusterman is on the show with us today. He's going to be talking about this amazing book, and he's written a whole series of books that are very popular, very exciting, New York Times bestselling author. He's going to be on the show talking with us about that. Neil is the author of many novels for young adults, including Unwind, which was an ALA best book for young adults, and Quick Pick for Reluctant Young Readers, Everlost, and Downsiders, which was nominated for 12 state reading awards he also writes screenplays for motion pictures and television shows such as animorphs and goosebumps the father of four children neil lives in southern california welcome to the show neil how are you i am doing very well glad to be on the show and we're honored to have you thank you very much for coming by and spending some time with us today how many books have you written i, I the the expansive novels that you have on amazon are epic gleanings is number 53 53 holy yeah. crap wow that's just <laughs> amazing so uh tell us uh what motivated you to write this latest book oh we should probably get your dot com if you have it or wherever you want people to find you on the interweb as well sure it's a uh, storyman.com hmm. or at neil schusterman on uh instagram uh twitter and uh and just neil schusterman at facebook there you go so what motivated you to write this latest book uh, you know, the, the Arc of a Scythe series has been my most successful series, and I was not ready to leave that world. Mm -hmm. I love the characters. Fans wanted more. Uh, they they wanted, you know, backstories on, on characters. Uh, they were always asking me questions that I couldn't answer in the series. And so this is an opportunity for me to explore different aspects of the world that I didn't get to explore in the in the trilogy and also to give fans some of the things that they've been asking for. There you go. So tell us about the book. And is this a book where people can jump in in the middle of, of many of the novels that you have about this world and 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 get it? Uh, or do they need to start at another position if they're new? Well, I mean, if you're new, you can get it. I mean, the, the, the world is pretty straightforward. It's a world where we get to where human beings get to live forever. Mm. And uh, the only way that you can die is to be chosen to die by a scythe who are kind of these these uh, Jedi of death who travel the world <laughs> thinning out the population. Wow. Uh, and so sort of when, when, once you know that, then, uh, then you know, you, you know all you need to know to go into the stories. Of course, it's always better if you've read the, uh, you know, the, the trilogy before reading these side stories, but it still stands on its own. You should buy them all and just catch up then, yes. uh, including this one. Uh, this is really interesting. So you, the, the, there's these people that go around. Can you hire them to uh, take care of other people for you, or do they kind of work on their own? <laughs> well, they work on their own, and they make their own laws. They're above the law, and they can do uh -huh. whatever they want with, with impunity. Wow. So they're kind of, they're kind of like – faster for people who are, uh, who are not as uh, – 
as honorable as they're supposed to be. Ah, so they they kind of settle some scores, or they're kind of the the uh, what would you call them? Kind of the they're the the authority that maintains the balance of good yes. and evil, maybe. Pretty much, yeah. Ah, it's supposed to be good, except you know, bad some some bad eggs get in there. So you live forever in this world. Is it is it set in a in, a, in space a different planet? Is it set in Vegas? So where is it? Where is it <laughs> established at? <laughs> it's set in. I mean, they're not too distant future. A couple of hundred years from now, you know, uh, AI is now controlling the world, but a benevolent uh-huh. AI. It's it's sort of the idea was to do a, a story that was the opposite of a dystopian story. Uh-huh. Whereas dystopian stories are about what happens when the world goes wrong. Uh, the world of Scythe is what happens when we get everything that we want, when everything goes right, uh-huh. when, we, when we defeat all diseases and, uh, and AI, rather than being a terrifying thing, actually is this benevolent thing that has helped us. Uh, but of course, in a world where we get everything we want, there are going to be consequences and we have to mm. face the consequences of having everything that we want. And one of those is sort of having uh, no more natural death. And so death has to be something that is doled out by the sites. I love this concept and I love it the way you put it, because most people do write about the future and dystopian. And if you watch the news, it's not hard to connect those yeah. dots. Um, but uh, so, you know, there's a what's that old adage? Be careful what you wish for. You might yeah. get it. And uh, I imagine you, you know, you exploring that in the books and flushing that out, flushing this that out uh, would would uh, give give a lot of room for uh, stuff. You know, I don't. I mean, living forever. Do you really want to live forever? I mean, that's a lot of X's that you kind of have stalking you on Facebook. <laughs> well, yeah, the whole thing about living forever is that, you know, when you have endless amounts of time to do anything that you want, you kind of never do anything. And ah. that's one of, the, one of the consequences is that people have lost their passion for life because there is no longer an expiration date. Sounds like me at 40. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, do people get older as they age or are they do they get locked they, in? They do, but they can reset their age back. They call it turning the corner. So at oh, any wow. point in time, they can set their age back to any age that they want from 21 and up. So this people are constantly, you know, getting to a certain age and then setting this clock back. Uh, do I get to keep all the smarts that I learned over 40, 50 years or whatever? In theory, yes, you get to keep everything. Even if you nice. get into, even if you get into an accident uh, mm-hmm. and you and you go deadish, as they call it, you oh. just get brought back, oh. and all of your memories are retained by the Thunderhead, which is the AI. And so, you you know, you can't die by accident. So people start doing dangerous things because they know that uh, that they'll just be brought back, and it can't kill them. I guess you would kind of get a little flippant with your life. I mean, yeah, you know, skydiving you, you... without a parachute, if you know. They call it splatting. It's a thing in the, in the splatting? world. Splatting? Wow, yeah. it's a thing. Wow. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to go out go out with a bang, and then you're not really going out. So, yeah. you know, you got that going on. And so are, they, are, this, are the Scythe people, are they kind of like uh, the police department, or are they kind of a moral uh, code of – how does that go on? It's more of a moral code. I mean, they're supposed mm-hmm. to be the, uh, these, these honorable, uh, you know – the, you know, the best of the best, you know, the, the, mm-hmm. the Jedi of this world who uh. Uh, do what they do, not because they want to end life, but because they know that it is this solemn task that they're performing for the human race. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, when you have that much power, uh, mm-hmm. there's bound to be some some characters that get in there who should not be doing it. And they start to abuse this. Uh oh, those they've got the bad sky cops, maybe that, that yeah. come into play. Um, so I imagine this leaves uh, quite a lot of room for really great writing and reading and and uh, exploring out these spaces. And of course, you know, is it's always that good and evil, that battle of good and evil, right? Yeah, and uh, you know, the world has grown so rich. You know, one of the mm-hmm. fun things about world building is that your world starts to get out of out of control. It starts to you know become so real that there's things to explore that you never even thought thought about before. Uh, and so, you know, getting to play within this world has been a lot of fun. Yeah. So is the population getting kind of out of control? Cause people are still having kids, right? Even yeah. though they live forever. Yeah. Well, you know, the Thunderhead keeps the world sustainable, but uh, okay. there has to be a certain amount of people who die to keep that, keep that happening, which is why there are sites. 
Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the characters in the book that you uh, that you flesh out. Uh, well, you know, the, the main characters in the series are, are, are Citra and Rowan, two teenagers who are taken on as apprentices to be to to be sides. And uh, we sort of watch their growth through the through the three books. But uh, in Gleanings, in the, which is, you know, a collection of stories, uh, I get to explore the backstories of some of our favorite sites. You know, there's Scythe Faraday, who's kind of like my Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, and uh, there's uh, Scythe Curie. Uh, and uh, we get to see her as a teenager. You know, she's sort of this uh, stately, uh, venerable Scythe who's been around for 100 years. But now we get to see her as a teenager. Mm. And then there's... Uh, there is Scythe Goddard, who is the bad guy. I mean, he is he is perhaps the the, the nastiest villain I've I've ever written, and we get to see him when he was a creepy sixteen year old. You know what oh. was what was it that made him this bad guy? Ah, I it sounds like my sixteen years. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I've read I read the book, but uh, that's probably you know I I was up to something in my sixteen years or something. I think it was mostly chasing girls around town, but. I have my moments, I suppose. Everyone does at that age, at adolescence and stuff. So, uh, how many how many books are there in the series itself? You're written. Do you say fifty three books? Yeah, in this series, there's uh, it's, it's just the the, the trilogy, mm -hmm. uh, the three, and then Gleanings, which is the sort of short story collection that wraps everything up. Yeah. So, do you, I, I haven't closed the idea of maybe doing another one or maybe doing uh, a prequel. I have a lot of fans asking for a prequel. Uh, so, you know, there might be some, someday I might go back and do that, but uh, I have, you know, new ideas and new worlds that I'm sort of working on right now. There you go. I, and, or would there be more books in this, would this become maybe the first of a series? Maybe the post quote was the it, whole star it, Wars thing, right? The whole yeah, it, it, it could be, it could be, you know, I, I, uh, I never, I never, you know, say no to those things because, uh, if, if, if an idea hits me and I get really excited about it, then I, you know. I'll go with it. Where did you get the artwork? There's a, those of you watching on YouTube and those uh, on the podcast, I want to tease you to watch our YouTube. Uh, there's a beautiful um, display frame of, of one of the characters uh, or covers of your book. Uh, wh how did you discover the artist for that? Or who is the artist for that? And, uh, Kevin and Tong is a, a mm -hmm. fantastic artist. Uh, it's, it's the publisher that, uh, that, that put us together. And he wow. just created this iconic image. And, uh, you know, for all, you know, it started, of course, with the first one. And then each each one has just been spectacular. Mm -hmm. uh, really pleased with his work. It really sets the bar high now for all of my books, though. You know, it's like they, <laughs> yeah. they all have to be as good as sight. Yeah. The, uh, it, it's it's it, all your books are that way with from the series because you look at them and you just you're kind of struck by it. You're just like, what is that? What's going on? Oh, my gosh. That's, it's really cool looking. It kind of has an alien feel to it. Uh, maybe futuristic feel, I guess. And, uh, but it really draws the eye in. You're like, what's going on here? And, uh, you know, a lot of books you'll see them and you're just like, okay, I know what that's about. And, oh, yeah. uh, but it draws them in. Half that battle is getting, is getting your attention. And so, yeah. you know, these book covers really do that. I think they're really, they're really complimentary to the stories. Uh, any chance on some uh, films or TV coming out? There's this sounds like one of those books that really should be a film. It would make a great film with the plot of being able to live forever and come back and all that stuff. Yeah, it's in development with Universal. Awesome song. And has been for mm -hmm. several years. And uh, they have mm -hmm. a, a new writer who's developing uh, a script. Steven Spielberg is shepherding the whole the whole mm -hmm. development process. Really? And, which there is you very go. you know that I like dream to be to you know to, to, to have him even recognize, you know, know my work. It's very exciting to think Steven Spielberg read my book. That's really an exciting thing. Not only that, but he, but cool. he wants to make it into a movie. So Dude, it's very that exciting. Would be a great futuristic movie. That would be awesome. You know, I do have a, I do have a setup scene for you though, since this is based in the future, you can have like a setting on the beach and uh, Charlton Heston comes up and goes, you damn dirty scythes. And there's like a Liberty. <laughs> the Statue you know, of Liberty. Wait, yeah. that's already taken. My, my apologies. <laughs> We do the jokes around here. Uh, what, what else can we tease out about the book? It's going to be out November 8th. And um, what, what else do you want to tease out about the book that we can uh, give away? Maybe some plots or some stories? that. Oh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> well, I, I had the opportunity to co-write with uh, several different authors on the, on the story. One of the great things about a story collection is that while I, while I did you know about two-thirds of the stories, about a third of them, I got to co-write with oh, different wow. 
And, and that's a lot of fun having the chance to do that. I, I wrote a story with author David Yoon. Uh, also wrote a story with uh, my son and his partner, uh, Jared Schusterman and so Sophia Lapuente. They uh, wrote a story about Scythe's Dali and Gaudi in Barcelona, the two, two, these two sites that are uh, in a bitter feud with one another. Mm. Uh, there is, I, I always get asked by fans, can animals get to live forever? Can your pets live forever in this world? And I was yeah. never able to address that in the series. So now there's a story about, uh, about a pet within mm. the world of Scythe that uh, is co-written uh, co with uh, a, another writer, Michael Payne. Who, uh, who specializes in writing stories about animals. And so I, I knew I wanted him to work on it with me. This is pretty awesome. I'd love to have my dogs live forever. That's the one thing I hate about, uh, you know, uh, you know, animals. I mean, I hate animals, but I hate, <laughs> I hate the aspect of where they last about 10 to 15 years. And, and uh, you know, I'm really getting tired of going through them. I would really like for them just to stay around. But they're probably sick of me. That's probably why they're leaving. Well, so, in, in, in the world of sight, they can just be brought back and and brought back to being, I guess, not puppies, but brought back to being younger. That'd be cool. You all your all your life, but it, but you know, each time you bring a, each each time you revive a pet, it costs twice as much. So ah, well, there you go. That would get pretty expensive since they last ten to fifteen. My dogs would just be like, "Oh, you again? Are you serious? <laughs> I got to put up with another ten years of you. I I left early because you're a jerk and you smell bad." But, you know, that's I have Huskies. That's how they talk. Um, <laughs> and then I give them a treat and they like me. Well, this should be pretty exciting to come out. Sounds like it's going to really uh, uh, impress your fans and, and they're going to love it. Uh, do we want to touch on the, the trilogy that came up prior to this uh, and pitch that a little bit? Get people interested in that as well? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the trilogy is about what happens when the Scythedom, when the, this group of Scythes starts to become corrupt. Mm. And uh, it's up to these the two main characters, Citra and Rowan, who have, you know, Citra has has is in the process of becoming a scythe and Rowan sort of becomes a dark knight. Uh, you know, he's uh, working in the shadows to uh, to take out all the bad scythes. Mm -hmm. And so it's uh, it's, you know, the, the, their journey of growth. And uh, and, this, you know, the second book is The Thunderhead, which is. Uh, you know, that is the AI and it's told from the point of view of this benevolent AI, which is very godlike and wants nothing but the best for us, mm -hmm. but it can't save us from ourselves. Oh, it's kind of like God, maybe. I mean, if you believe in God, I'm an atheist, but it's kind of like a God sort of figure where it's like, I can't save you guys. You guys, if you guys go screw things up, it's on you. Well, that's what the Thunderhead discovers is that mm. to be a God means letting letting people make their own mistakes. Uh, sounds like my people on Facebook. I'm just my <laughs> Facebook. <I don't> <laughs> and then you have the toll as the third in the series. Yes, the, the toll. Everything sort of comes together in mm -hmm. the toll, and ultimately we we find out uh, why we're, we've been sort of trapped on Earth. Because you think the obvious choice is that if the population is growing and you have this AI that can do just about everything to to start getting us off the planet and starting to, you know, to have colonies elsewhere, but that hasn't been successful. Now we find out why mm. we find out that, uh, uh, well, I, I don't want to give a spoiler, but, uh, sure. but, uh, we, you know, we, we find out that there's a reason why that hasn't been happening. Oh. And the sides are very much involved in that, the, the bad sides go. and there the good go. sides are trying to, uh, trying to bring back, bring back order and honor to, mm. uh, to the organization. Always good versus evil. It's it's always interesting. I love how you present it in the future, where uh, without the dystopian, because sometimes those get a little dark, you know, especially that Charlton Heston one. <laughs> well, you know, dystopia. Dystopia has been so big for the past uh, ten years or so. I mean, I had written a, a book series called Unwind, which was you know this dark world in the future where teenagers uh, that nobody wants are used for their body parts. Ah, the rule is you have to use a hundred percent. So it poses the question, if 100% of you is alive but divided and part of different people, are you still alive? Ah, that's but, a good question. Uh, but the thing is, uh, with, uh, with that series, having, having done so much uh, of, of dark dystopian stories, uh, I, I felt that I wanted to try to flip that and do the opposite of dystopian. You know, not utopian, because uh, 
there's really no such thing as utopia. Mm. You know, I mean, there's uh, there. So it's it's more like I would call it anti dystopian because you know utopia, the perfect world can't really exist. But it's what true. happens when we when we get as close as we can, and then we have to deal with with uh, all that comes with that. There you go. I love the I love the complexity of that. Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Uh, you know, and, and everybody wants the world to be perfect, but uh, it turns out there is no such thing as perfection. But there will be complexities that will come out of out of just about everything. It's kind of like one of those stories where I mean, not your story specifically, but it's kind of like one of those parables where people want to go back in time and you know they live a different better life or get with somebody or whatever you know we have novels like that that come on the show and it's like well that creates a whole new set of problems so, mm -hmm. welcome to the human race we're always creating problems that's what we do best so uh this has been pretty wonderful thank you very much for coming on the show we really appreciate it neil you're very welcome i've enjoyed talking with you there you go neil give us your plugs uh, your dot com so people can find you on the internet please uh sure uh storyman.com is my website uh, and I can be found on Instagram and Twitter uh, at Neil Schusterman and uh, on Facebook, uh, just N Neil Schusterman. There you go. He's or just they spell my name right. There's no C in Schusterman and Neil is N-E-A-L. Do they do that to you a lot? All the time. All the time. They do that to me. They go Chris with one S and they make it two S's and they put one S on the Voss. And uh, the, the word uh, Neil is awesome too. Mine's N-E-I-L. So. It's probably my fault. They're spelling it wrong. I don't know. <laughs> it was my father's name, so uh, it's good. But uh, order up the books. Wherever fine books are sold, people, stay out of those alleyway bookstores. I got shivved in an alleyway one time <laughs> recently. Had to get a tetanus shot, so don't do that. Go to wherever fine books are sold, and you'll find Neil's books. Gleanings, stories from the Ark of a Scythe. Uh, it's coming out November 8th, so you want to pre-order it now so you can get ahead of it. Get ahead of your uh, book club. Be the first one to read it and all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time.